Now, number 10 says the pro-Palestinian protesters who climbed onto the Royal Artillery Memorial on Wednesday night were going against British values. But isn't the freedom of expression fundamental to our country's values? Or have protesters crossed a line? Former Met Police detective Peter Blexley says anyone who climbs onto a war memorial is being disrespectful. But journalist Ella Whelan says that our society is built on freedom of expression. Good morning to both of you. Ella, let's come to you first then. I mean, Rishi Sunak has talked about this. He said that climbing on war memorials is against British values. What do you make of that? Well, politicians can have uh, whatever opinion they like about uh, what protesters do. And um, the question is whether or not he's suggesting there should be more powers given to the police. And uh, I think, you know, I'd agree with the fact that climbing up on a, you know, war memorial is disrespectful. It's not sensible. It's not going to win you any uh, much support. But protests should be allowed to be disrespectful. It shouldn't have to um, capped off to people's sensibilities in order to be allowed to happen. Um, and I think that the, you know, if we think about what British values mean. To me, what they should be is pretty simple but big ideas like tolerance, democracy and freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of protest. And this government's track record on the way it's dealt with freedom of protest in the last sort of two or three years has been pretty appalling, essentially clamping down on all forms of protest unless they meet a very tight checklist for the police around being disruptive, noisy, all the rest of it. So uh, I, w I would like to give Rishi Sunak a lecture in what British values should be and remind him of the F word, freedom. Uh, uh, Peter, I, I, I follow you uh, on social media, as, as you know, and you often talk about the scenario that, that the police face at a very difficult time and where they are hamstrung in terms of the action that they can take. Um, the police, the Met Police came out and said, you know, we didn't react quickly enough, but there is nothing illegal about climbing onto a war memorial. So there was nothing that the police could have done other than ask the protesters to come down. Unfortunately, there isn't a specific offence of climbing onto a war memorial, and I personally would support the Prime Minister wholeheartedly if new legislation was pushed through in order to make that a specific crime. Our glorious war dead fought for all our freedoms, our freedoms to have this debate, our freedoms to worship whatever faith we want to or be a person of no faith, and so much more. They did not heroically lay down their lives for some disrespectful vermin to clamber on board the memorials, thereby showing utter, utter disrespect. So, Ella, from that point of view, you well, know, Peter's obviously been clear about that. Do you think that, you know, there is a line and it shouldn't be crossed? I think that the, these people should be judged in the court of public opinion. And that is, you know, that is what... Um, the idea that the, the, the freedoms that Peter has just so eloquently described um, about the importance of being able to act on your conscience, express yourself, um, you know, the reason why we're different in this country from many other countries in that we respect the idea of uh, freedom of thought, freedom of expression, or at least we should. Uh, you can't pick and choose the freedom that you like and the cause that you like and then ban the, the cause that you don't. I really don't want to sit here and try and uh, uh, defend people, you know, and a lot of it is sort of daft teenagers, people who are breakaways from the protest, whatever you think about that protest, uh, doing stupid things. This is not a sort of concerted campaign. I mean, it's not even really the same as sort of just a pile of people who, in, you know, with an intent to cause criminal damage. Um, but I think just why do we always reach for the ban button? Why do we always want to create more law to stifle people's ability to express themselves? And it might sound funny talking about freedom of speech when you've got some idiot climbing up a statue. But I think we need to think about the ramifications of what we call for. More police powers to intervene into what people can do in the public square is, for me, if you really understand what freedom means and, and the importance of it, is a big, big no-no. Peter, what would you like to say to that? The right to protest is, of course, central to our democracy. And the police are very well aware of that. It's only about a decade or so when a huge police march walked down Whitehall to Parliament. But, of course, protest has to happen within a legal framework. 
Otherwise, we would have anarchy. So those who cannot respect the laws should not protest. There has to be conditions, terms, and there has to be boundaries. When those boundaries are crossed, but then it goes into illegality, the police need to act, and people need to be dealt with accordingly. Go ahead, Ella. But, Peter, I mean, you know, we already have... Say, if, if you really wanted to, you could do people on criminal damage charges, or you could... You know, there are, there are so many laws already on the statute books that could cover this kind of behaviour. Do you not think that, you know... And, and maybe you could say something about police officers in, in the recent sort of war that seems to be happening between the police and, and politicians seem unconfident or at least unable to go in and deal with... Uh, people behaving badly in a way that they should. I mean, obviously, Suella Braverman has caused a bit of a stink by criticising them for their bias. But is this a, just a case of police confidence? Or do we really want to be making more laws? Why not just use the laws that we have efficiently and better? Um, I think trying to solve a police lack of confidence by just throwing more powers at them is, seems to be dangerous from a civilian perspective. Um, when it, you're just saying, if you can't do your job, let's just give you more powers and see if you can do it better that way. Or maybe I'm being unfair on the police. They seem to not be able to do their job. There is a war going on between Israel and Hamas. There is not a war between the police and politicians. And your crass and clumsy use of language, I think, is something you need to think very carefully about. There is not a crime. It seems of pretty hairy damage. between them, put if it that way. In soft... There is. There is not a crime of criminal damage if somebody wearing soft-soled shoes, for example, clambers aboard a monument, not causing any damage, but merely being disrespectful. And the Prime Minister has quite properly nailed then what's it the here problem? in terms of the fact that it does not accord with British values and, therefore, an offence, perhaps, of criminal trespass upon a war memorial needs to be created so that people who behave in this appalling manner, when they clamber down or when they are brought down, they can be properly dealt with by the police, by which I mean they can be introduced to the pavement, introduced to handcuffs and introduced to the back of a police van. Ella? I think you're in danger, Peter, of starting to... I think you're in danger of starting to sound like those... You know, there, there, there are people who think that anything offensive should be illegal these days, whether it's sort of Twitter comments or, you know, uh, but that anything that someone deems to be an affront or disrespectful or offensive should immediately be, by any means necessary, be made illegal. Um, that's the kind of, they call it the snowflake position. And I wonder if we're straying into that territory here, which is that, you know, I think even if you don't, even if you have a different political perspective to the one about um, the First World War and the one about, you know, all of that stuff, that you can understand that this is a monument that's deeply meaningful to some people and just like, you know, any other sort of public monument or public building, churches, mosques, synagogues, things like that, you'd, you'd say, leave it alone, that's not a place for political protest. But that, the people who decide that is the way in which we police ourselves. That's what I call the court of public opinion. Rather than saying any, any time we feel offended, we immediately get on the phone to the police I mean, and say, lock this person up for doing it. I think that that's, that's much more of a dangerous affront to British values and freedom and tolerance than, uh, than a couple of idiots climbing up a monument. I think you just you have to get some perspective here okay. as to what you'll lose if you go down the route of making illegal anything that you find offensive. Ella uh, and Peter, thank you for your time today. I'm afraid we're, we're out of it, so we're going to have to leave you there. I mean, on the show yesterday, the new Home Secretary did say um, that he was going to be looking at this with the Prime Minister, so they are going to try and do something in order to, 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 to enable the police to stop to step that sort in of thing. if it yeah, does happen again. Absolutely. Uh, but, but I think, you know, call to public opinion is Ella was mentioning there, lots of people getting in touch just saying, you know, like, Damien, our war memorials are and always should be sacrosanct and just talking about how disrespectful it is to, mm. to climb on them. So Universally. On that front this morning. The very rarely we have a consistent one-sided opinion on all of it and everybody that is watching and contributing to that University says it was hugely disrespectful and something needs to be done to ensure that doesn't happen on those specific war memorials particularly.